Hi, Dr. Les Anderson. I'm an extension professor at the University of Kentucky. I'm one of our five bee specialists, excuse me. Every year for about the last uh, 15 years, I've had the pleasure uh, of taking our clientele, our producers that attend Beef Bash through the beef herd to talk about our breeding programs and the purpose of the herd and everything. And so we're replacing that normal personal contact with today's video. Just to make sure everybody's on the same page, and I kind of tell this every single time we come out, the university really has three functions. We educate students, we educate the public, and we call that extension, and we do research. And here at Princeton, our farm is dedicated really to all three of those branches of the university, but we focus mainly on extension and on research. And you can't really talk about the herd without talking about the overall underlying goals uh, and purposes of the farm and of the research herd. One of our main goals, one of our main foci, is that we want to have a herd that's representative of the state of Kentucky. Okay? So when you guys come to see our farm, we want you to see something that would be very typical of a trip anywhere in the state where you're going to see an excellent set of cow herd, or an excellent cow herd. The one thing we do want to kind of separate ourselves on is we want to breed and, and manage cattle in a manner that backs or reflects our educational programs and are really designed to optimize beef production efficiency and our goals for beef cattle production here on the western end of Kentucky. About 30 years ago, Dr. Burris got stuck with a set of Brangus cows that we originally got uh, out in Colorado, okay? And we took those cows to the, the Coldstream farm in Lexington, and I'm just gonna be really honest with you, they were really wild, and they weren't very good cows. And so after four or five years, uh, the animal science department kind of panicked a little bit because we had these cows, there was about 200 of them, and we didn't know what to do with them. Dr. Burris, raised his hand and said, I'll take them, I'll take them, okay? And the reason that Dr. Burris took those Brangus cattle is here in Kentucky, and in particular on, on the western end, but here in Kentucky, we have problems with heat stress. Our cattle graze mainly into fight infected fescue and happens to get a little bit hot out here every once in a while. And so the combination of consuming into fight infected fescue and it's just a little bit hot all the time, really leads us towards genetic profiles and genetics that are more heat stress oriented. And that's any cattle that's got a little bit of ear, okay, so any, any, any breed that has a little bit of Brahmin in it, um, gives us an opportunity to have less heat stress in our cattle. So Dr. Burris saw this opportunity to capture a set of cattle that were naturally heat tolerant, and he brought them down here to begin to develop a herd that emphasized productivity, efficiency, and heat tolerance. Now, one of the things Dr. Burris learned very quickly was the reason they wanted to get rid of these cattle at Coldstream was that they were a little bit goofy, okay? Um, I got here 23, I'm on my 24th year now, and I distinctly remember the first time we worked these cattle. Ugh. I'm telling you, they, they were real uh, cage bangers, okay? Um, and so one of the things that Dr. Burris has emphasized during his career here and that, that Dr. Van Valen is now emphasizing as she takes over the farm is docility. We have gone on trips to find sires to maximize our, 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 our docility and the temperament so that when we have cattle and we keep cattle, we develop a herd that, that stresses docility because honestly, cattle that are, that are, that are crazier, cattle that, that get up and down and go pretty quick, grow less, they're less efficient, and honestly, they're more dangerous.
okay? And we wanted to get away from that. So one of the first things that, that, that Dr. Burris did was he selected for docility, okay? Um, at, for a while, we did Brangus, but then we decided we probably needed to add a little bit more English into the breed, and so we have gone to what they call ultra blacks, okay? So you have a Brangus, which is 3 8 Brahmin, 5 8 Angus, crossed with a purebred Angus to get just a little bit more ear out of the cattle so that they have less ear phenotype, but you still maintain the heat tolerance, the growth, and the efficiency that comes with having just a little bit of the Brahmin influence in that cow herd. So what you're gonna see here when we go through the cow herd is ultra blacks. Most of the cattle here have a little bit of ear influence, okay? Most of the cattle here are designed for that 1,350 pound body condition score six commercial cow. So a lot of the cattle that you'll see here have a little bit of Brahmin influence, whether they're purebred Brahmin, or purebred Brangus, excuse me, purebred Angus, or the ultra blacks, which is really what, what we're after. We have a small group of purebred Angus cattle to generate our bulls so that we don't have to find outside source genetics. We really wanna to try to keep our genetics in-house as much as we can so that we can maximize our opportunities for the right size profile, the right productivity profile, the right feet and leg profile, and of course, the right docility profile. We wanna make sure that those cattle are gentle and that we can easily handle them. Here in the background, you'll see one of our, our Angus steer, our <laughs> bulls. He was in the background, he's now uh, moved off. Um, and we, as we go through, we will see more of our, our, of our seed stock, of our herd sires, we'll go down and we'll look at our, at our cows and at our young females. We, we've got a fall calving herd here, but we've only had one calf, okay? And as is typical, we bred two sex-oriented, sex-sorted semen, and we were supposed to have a male, and of course we got a heifer. So that's just the way that, that kind of stuff goes. 95% accuracy on getting a male, but we are an outlier, Dr. Van Valen, and we're gonna have a heifer even in light of all that wide-bearing sperm. So as we progress through, I'll continue to, hopefully in a conversational manner, describe to you our breeding program, our, our, our intentions, and, and I hope you enjoy this small, brief snippet of what we're doing here at Princeton with the breeding program. We're out here looking at the yearling heifers now. Um, recall from just a second ago that we are really after kind of ultra blacks, which is a Brangus Angus mix. We want some there to be somewhere in that 1 16th to 1 8th Brahmin in most females. We do, you, and you can see the Brahmin influence on a lot of these gals. If you look at their ears, they're a little bit down. If you look at their front end, you can see a little bit of, of excess flesh and a little bit more navel. Uh, in, in some of the heifers. We do have some purebred Angus that are in our purebred Angus seed stock generating herd so that we can generate our own, our own herd sires. But we try to keep that at only about 20 to 30 so that we can find a, a couple of good bulls out of those females to use as replacements. In general, our goal is, is to create a set of cattle that are what we think at the top end of, of what we would like to see commercial cattle here in, on the western end of Kentucky. Um, and also we're trying to support the research component of the university. And so we need cattle that are very indicative of commercial cattle throughout the state so that we can get applicable, relevant research data. These heifers are very typical of what we're trying to do. 9601 is coming up to see us. Gotta love that, okay? These heifers, our goal when these heifers get to be uh, 13 months of age, which will be in a, around that mid to end of October, okay? We want these gals to be about 850 pounds at a body condition score five to five and a half. Now right now, these, these girls are in perfect shape. They're at about body condition score five, getting close to five and a half. And at that 13 month 
check. That's going to when we're going to check for their reproductive soundness. So we'll do a pelvic area check and we will do a reproductive track score check. We also document hair coat score, okay? And we document docility in the chute so that we can make sure that we're getting cattle that shed quickly, which are a little bit more heat tolerant, and cattle that are gentle, along with heifers that have adequate pelvis sizes to accommodate the birth weight ranges that we have, the calving ease needs that we have here at the farm. And so what we find is, is pretty much perfect for our production situation, which we would hope is perfect for the, the beef cattle industry throughout the state, is that 850 pound, 13 month old heifer that's got a pelvis that will allow her to have a 70 pound calf as a two year old. She's already cycling. She has, certainly has no leftover winter dead hair and you can actually see a couple of heifers out here that still haven't shed and, and is docile, okay? And those are gonna be our, our criteria. We'll then synchronize these heifers, AI them one round and turn them out with a bull, and then we will choose for replacements those heifers that, calve, that are gonna calve earliest in the calving season. Again, our goal is about 850 pounds. Of course, we're gonna have some that are 775. We're gonna have probably a couple that are 900, okay? But we want our average cow size to be about 850 pounds with a body condition score of five and a half at 13 months of age. What we've found is that results in a cow that's somewhere between 1,350 and 1,400 pounds at a body condition score six in the producing herd. And you're probably screaming, oh, 1,200 pound cow, we need, we need smaller cows than that. Remember, every body condition is about 75 to 100 pounds. So a 1,350 pound body condition score six cow is a 1,250 pound to 1,275 pound body condition score five cow. So it, they're in the right growth area, the right mature, mature size area for us. We just put a little bit more condition on them to maximize our reproductive potential. Okay, you've heard me talk a ton about cow size. Okay, what difference does it make? Who cares if I have a 1,600 pound cow versus a 1,200 pound cow versus a 1,350 pound cow and a body condition score six? Well, the difference really is efficiency. And what our goal is here is to be efficient. All right, number one, 1,600 pound cows eat more than 1,200 pound cows. Actually, the one ton more each year than a 1,200 pound cow, one ton. Not 100 pounds, not 500 pounds. They actually eat one ton more feed than a 1,200 pound cow, okay? Well, that ton of feed's only costing me $200. If she's gonna be efficient, that 1,600 pound cow has to produce a calf whose value is at least $200 more or you're losing money. So our goal with cow size is really cow efficiency. We're looking for a cow to wean somewhere in that 40 to 50% of her body weight. And if we're looking at the entire herd, we want at least 40% calf weaned per body weight of cow exposed. Okay, now that's, that's a really weird term, but if you've got a 1200 pound cow weaning a 600 pound calf, she's weaning 50% of her body weight, okay? But if you had 20 of them and you only had a 90% weaning rate, okay, those, other, those cows that weaned a calf have to pay for those cows that didn't. So it's only fair to divide, okay, or multiply by, by 0.9. You can divide by one or multiply by, by 0.9, but the goal is, is to be efficient. And here with our marketing structure, with our grass base and our marketing plan, a 1,350 pound cow in a body condition score six gives us the best opportunity to be profitable and gives us our best opportunity to wean a high percent of that cow's body weight in calf. A couple other points that I wanted to make about the cow herd. Number one, 
is the vast improvement that we've made in the docility of these cows. Now, you weren't here 20 years ago. You couldn't see what those cows were like. But now we got cows that'll come a running instead of cows that'll go a running. Okay, even before we, we threw a couple uh, pounds of soy holes out here just to keep them around. But even before we threw the soy holes out, these cows came up and they, were, they, they came to us, okay? They weren't scared of us. They weren't, they weren't nervous or hesitant in any way. And that's what's gonna help us in the long run be an, an, an efficient producer of beef because more cattle that are more docile actually grow better, they conceive better, and they perform better. Tons of research on those three points. Another thing that I wanted to bring out about the cows is for the most part, these cows are slicked off. All right, if you look at their hair coats, they're all very short haired, very slick haired cows. Okay, and a lot of that has to do with that little bit of brangus that we have, have in these females. I'm currently involved in a, in a different video series and we've got heifers of different genetics and they were born the, the same, you know, in September and they came out, they were weaned in, in March and April and some of those heifers still have their full winter hair coat on. Surviving heat stress and surviving heat stress as they graze high into fight infected fescue, one of the key factors is hair coat. We can't afford for cattle to be carrying their winter hair, that long dead hair, because that elevates the body temperature and that ex exacerbates our problems with heat stress. Hopefully you see uh, what we're after. I mean, several of these cows are right on target with what we're doing. Somewhere in that 1,350 pound range at a body condition score six. Cows that are ready to roll, cows that's got just a little bit of ear in them, okay? Cows that are slicked off, cows that are docile, cows that are ready to perform. Thanks for your time.